if you stray from that for too long, you have problems. Too much temperature, we get heat stroke. Heat stroke, hyperthermia, hyper, too much. Too little body temperature, we get hypothermia. Yeah? So this brings us on to another one of the uh, psychological ways that we teach. Uh, with the acronyms and mnemonics, we discuss the rule of threes and how that relates to protection. We say three hours without proper regulation. You mentioned hydration, which is the third overall concern. We have three days without hydration. And of course these are guidelines. And we must bear in mind that it's not three days functioning perfectly and then on the third day you just wind to a stop like the Duracell bunny. It's a steady decline. And then, of course, the third thing is three weeks without food. Okay? Protection was number one. The second thing is location. We need to know where we are. We need to start letting others know we're there. Yeah? We hopefully have done our groundwork before we headed out. We've left a flight plan. I've told my wife I'm heading here for this many days with him and I'll be back on this day. Right? If you haven't, we uh, address that very uh, quickly. So protection, location. Location, we consider letting our rescuers know where we are. Any ideas how we do that? Signaling, excellent, good choice. Signaling, we have active and passive signaling. So you can run off and find the water and a plane goes over and you're gonna go, I really wish I'd spent 15 minutes and built a signal fire because there might not be another one for a week, right? Yeah. We discuss active signaling, such as a signal fire, and we discuss passive signaling, such as leaving marks, blazes, hanging ribbon in trees. The third one is hydration. Absolutely right, hydration. Water's not optional. Without it, have a sip now. Without it, you die. You need it on a cellular level. Water, but that beaver, junk in it and the dead this no 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 so we teach but if in doubt drink the water if all you've got is dirty water drink it it's going to take a week before you really three or four days yeah you'll be dead before hydration first the final thing is digestion you can go a long time without eating some of us more than others that's my 10 pound survival kit. and um, that leads me on to the other thing we do discuss physical conditioning you know you need to be fit enough to venture into the uh, outdoors for your chosen activity. That's really it as far as survival is concerned, you know? But if you're heading out into the bush without any survival training at all, you're relying on luck. You ensure your vehicle, you ensure your home, ensure yourself, ensure your family. Go away and do your own research. Obviously, yeah, we're in business, we'll sell you a course, but go away and do your own research, right? Take as much on board as you can. Don't rely on dumb luck in the bush because it will desert you. Don't plan on figuring things out after it's gone wrong because that's like saying I'll figure out how to swim when the Titanic starts sinking. It's not such a good plan. That's it as far as survival is concerned. The other course I mentioned that we teach is bushcraft and that area is, is my real passion. Whereas with survival, we're concerned with getting out of the bush as quickly as possible using as much equipment as we can. Bushcraft's almost the exact opposite. Our goal is to stay out for as long as we can. Now to do that, we have two options. We can either carry a thousand pounds of equipment on our back or a thousand pounds of knowledge in our head. I know which way is less. I know which one doesn't take batteries. I know which one I can't break or leave in the truck. Yeah, and I know which is the more adaptable. It's also challenging and rewarding. So with bushcraft, we look at replacing equipment with knowledge. And I'm not, you know, I'm gonna get lynched by the vendors here, but you can go and spend a thousand dollars on equipment. My wife will tell you, I'm a gear junkie, I've got nothing against it, you know? It's not about roughing it. If you're roughing it, you're doing it wrong. It's about smoothing it, but using equipment as a crutch, or knowledge as a crutch. We choose knowledge, okay? And it gives us a lot more flexibility. So. Examples of that would be uh, when students come to us, generally on a Thursday, for their four-day course, we issue them with a sort of $50 bushcraft kit, and it's got the essentials that they need, and we send them out. And on a Thursday, they're set up in the bush, really they're camping, yeah? 
over the course of the four days, we push the knowledge in and we take the equipment out and we gauge the...